unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Ephesians 2.10. That happens to be one of my favorite scriptures, by the way. Can we please read together? The Bible says... For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should do what? That we should do what? Let's look at that chapter in the Amplified Version. The very, it says, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Wow. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the KJV. The KJV says, Amplified says recreated, but KJV says created in Christ. Praise the Lord. Um, I came to understand one thing about that bit of workmanship. Praise the Lord. That bit of workmanship literally means that you were God's own business. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You did not come into being because there was a big bang and you just manifested. Or because there was a certain animal that was crawling and then it has slowly over the edges turned into something else. Praise the Lord. To those people, I usually have a question for them. How is it that we still have the orangutans and the gorillas in the parks and there is no more progression theory going on? Did it seem to stop somewhere? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. You're looking at me like as if I'm a professor of theory. Don't worry. That is not my, my business. It's not why I'm here. It's not my... It's, it's not spiritual crinkum crankum. <laughs> Hey, Jesus. English is coming over from where? This is an anointing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. So the Bible says that we are his workmanship created in Christ. Praise the Lord. And my main point of concern was that God did not create you out of anything else, but he had to look into Jesus. He had to get into Jesus to get what will make you and me. Praise the Lord. It was not just anything. He was not just there relaxing one of those busy days and he was bored and he was like, oh, well, how do I do it? No. He had to see Jesus. He had to see his perfection. He had to see his glory. He had to see everything in his, everything in his aura and perfection. And he said, huh, now let me make Modesto. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is what the Bible means there. And who is Jesus? Let's look at Hebrews 1.3. Let us look at Hebrews 1 3. The Bible says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin, sight down on the hand of the majesty on high. Can we start from verse 2 so that we get actually verse 1? Verse 1, the Bible says, God at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Uh -huh. Has in this last days spoken unto us by who? His son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory. God had to look at the brightness of his glory to get matter that must create you. He says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of God the majesty on high. Let's look at that verse in the Amplified Version. Amplified. 
Amplified says, he is the sole expression of the glory of God. The light being, the outraying or the radiance of the divine. And he is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature. What don't you get? Upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by the mighty word of his power. God created you from his own soul, the sole expression of his glory. God created you from the brightness of his glory. Praise the Lord. Not for any matter. Not for you to just be there. No, there was a reason why. Praise the Lord. Now, when you read the Bible, the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians 1.17 that God, God is called the Father of glory. Praise the Lord. If he be that God is the Father of glory, it only follows that what comes out of him is glory. And you are born of God. You are of God, all oh, ye little children. And you have overcome, for greater is he that is in you than the devil that is in the world. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oh God, I already feel I'm on fire and we have just started. What will I do? Praise the Lord. Let's look at Romans 9.23. Romans 9.23. Now, Romans 9.23 is busy giving us the reason as to why we were fashioned the way we were fashioned. Can we start from verse 22? Verse 22 says, what, what if God, willing to show his wrath to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted for what? For destruction. Verse 23, that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Hallelujah. I want us to look at that version in the, in the NLT version. NLT. NLT says, he does this from verse 22. It says, in the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and his power, he is very patient with those on whom his anger falls, who, made, who were made for destruction. Verse 23, he does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those to whom he shows mercy, who were prepared in advance for glory. The Bible told us that we were prepared for good works, right? And the Bible told us that we, in that manner we were created in Christ for that glory. Praise the Lord. But now it says you were prepared in advance for glory. For glory. Praise the Lord. And we understand now, for us who have been coming and the teachings that we've been receiving, we understand now that the glory there, we are talking about glory doxa, which is everything that God is and God has put in the inside of you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of, hey, my God, I don't know. Modesta, calm down. Second Thessalonians verse 2, 13. It says, we are bound to give thanks always to God for who? For you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the truth and belief of the truth. Uh huh. Where unto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes I usually feel offended when I see the way Christians live their lives. They don't understand that God is in, is in very serious business. The Bible says you are called to obtain glory. You will not obtain glory because you did good things. You obtain glory because there is one that obeyed and his name was Jesus Christ. And he's not anywhere else. He is in the inside of you. He is the matter that fashioned and created you. Praise the Lord. He is what made you who you are today and what you will ever be until everything about you is done. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the inside of you is God's glory. In the inside of you is God's power. In the inside of you is everything that God calls inheritance invested in you. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. He says he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory. Of the glory of Jesus. Do you know what it means to obtain the glory of Jesus Christ? Meaning there was another glory. But he doesn't mind telling us about that glory. He said you 
and me. He called you to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. No wonder when Jesus was praying for us in the book of John 17, he says, my glory have I given unto them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are filled with the glory of God. You are full of the power of God. There is nothing that can come against you. Even heaven and hell knows who you are. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the book of Romans 8 verses 29. Romans 8 verses 29. He says, for whom he did for and know, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You were conformed to the image. Meaning, when the Bible says image there, okay, there is the image because you looked and there was a reflecting, a reflecting either mirror or, or, or shiningness of a glass or any metal and you saw yourself and that was a reflection, an image. But there is an image where it means the substance of the thing that creates another. The substance what creates you? The Bible says, for whom he did for a no, he also did predestinate to be conformed. The substance that formed Jesus Christ is the substance that formed you. God did not go places looking for things to check, to check in the inside of you. That is why the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians 1.4, Ephesians 1.4. It says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blame. According as he has chosen us in him, in him. Jesus looked, God looked around. And every time he was seeing Jesus, and he says, no, I want that one, Jesus. He was picking only what was the representative and the perfect mind of what Jesus was. Nothing else. And that is what happens still today. God looks you in the very way he looks at Jesus. God loves you the very way he loves Jesus. Why? Because by the finished works, you are as righteous as Jesus is righteous. You are as perfect as Jesus is perfect. You are as goodly as Jesus is goodly. Because the Bible says that herein is our love made perfect. That we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because, because, because. Because as he is, so are we. As he is, not as he will be. Praise the Lord. That is why most of the times when we look at these scriptures, we are just enraptured. Why? Because we are brought to a realization that we are not just for, you know, there are people who are just contented being the, 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 the old them. The old, the other thing that the mom and the dad brought forth. No, if you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, something changed. The Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. Praise the Lord. The perfection of power and the perfection of Christianity and the perfection of glory is Christ in you. Nothing else. Christ in you. Praise the Lord. That is how we know that we are going to change the world. Hallelujah. The Bible says, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this ministry, mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Verse 28, it says, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may prevent, present every man perfect in Jesus Christ. And thank God you come to this ministry. Because here we don't warn people like, Gwe, don't stop sleeping around. But if you're here and you're fornicating, stop it. Don't steal. No, that's not how we want. How do we want? We say you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When you hear that you are warned, you are like, oh God, I'm awakened to righteousness. Praise the Lord. We are not they that warn people and tell them, Gwe, what did you do yesterday night? Gwe, you are pregnant. Leave the ministry. No, 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 no. Praise the Lord. We, when, when I look at you, I'm like, oh, I see the brilliance of God's glory. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Praise the Lord. When I look at you, I'm like, oh, I see the power of God shining on you. I'm warning you. That is how we warn. Praise the Lord. It says, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect 
in Jesus Christ. What wants is what presents a man perfect in Jesus Christ. That is what wants. Praise the Lord. If you tell someone, why were you sleeping yesterday with so and so, how is that one in consonance to the revelation of Christ Jesus? It is not. Praise the Lord. Whether they did what or they did what, no, 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 they are children of God. They are born of God. They come from the loins of God. They are perfected. Praise the Lord. Mm, I know there are men's a few. Praise the Lord. Let us look at Ephesians 8. My God, Ephesians 1, 8. I need to calm down, sister. Pray for Sister Modesta. Let's go to message. Message version. It says, he thought of everything. Can we read together? He thought of everything. Provided for everything we could possibly need. Verse 9. Letting us in on the plans. He took such delight in making. You know the plans he was making, right? He set it all out before us in Christ. Uh huh. A long range plan in which everything will be brought together and summed up in him. Everything in deepest heaven, everything on planet earth. Uh huh. It is in Christ. Tell your neighbor, it is in Christ. It is in Christ that we find out who we are, what we are living for. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Did you hear that? It is in Christ that we do what? That we find out what we, who we are. Meaning, if you don't know Christ, you don't know me. Why? It is from Christ that I was created. It is from him that I was formed. It is from his very substance that I was picked out. Praise the Lord. If you don't know Christ, you don't know me. Ah, I tell you the truth, you don't know me. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our, our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designed on us for glorious living. My God, my God, my God. God designed us for a glorious living. Take a moment and take a picture of what to you is a glorious living. Praise the Lord. God designed it for you. He designed a glorious living for you. The Bible says he has ordained you to walk in those prearranged paths. Prearranged paths to a good life. Good life. Good life. Praise the Lord. And the other time I was preaching somewhere and I told them something. I told them, if it be that you are God's workmanship, it means God had to invest himself, his mind, his art, everything that he is and deposited it in the inside of you. Praise the Lord. Can God create weaknesses? Can God create infirmities? Can God create struggle? God cannot create things that are lacking. Why? Because he is the God of perfection. Praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I am perfect. Hey, praise the Lord. Not perfect because you have good makeup. Not perfect because you're putting on a matte lipstick. No, but perfect because what formed you is Jesus. Praise the Lord. This world is in trouble. Why? Because when they thought they were bright enough to crucify Jesus, he was busy multiplying himself everywhere in you and in me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is nothing they can do. Jesus is everywhere. Praise the Lord. Let's look at 1 Peter 1.3. Oh God, I need to come down. The Bible says, blessed be the God. I can't hear you reading. Which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you for reading it and getting excited about it. That is what my father was handling yesterday night. Second Peter 1 3. <laughs> I like this. Look at how they are looking at me. I just love your faces. It says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life. 
through the knowledge of him. Man, God called you. He says, number one, I called you to obtain glory. The glory which is in Jesus Christ. Number two, he's saying, he called you through the knowledge. He called you to obtain what? Glory and virtue. He called you to glory and virtue. Glory and virtue. Glory and excellence. Praise the Lord. He called you to glory and excellence. Oh, Jesus, let it sink in your head. Give us amplified version of that. Hey, he says, for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who has called us by his, to his own glory and excellence. Praise the Lord. You know those days, eh? Those days when those people had to experience God, God used to move in the tabernacle, eh? And then later on temples. So those days, if those people had to experience God, glory will come, but it will come from the tabernacle, from the temple. Praise the Lord. But there is a reason as to why God anointed you. Men right now are no longer looking for temples, are no longer looking for tabernacles. They are looking for you where Jesus is. Praise the Lord. For he said, and in those days I will dwell in them. And in those days I will walk in them. And in those days I will take my abode in the inside of them. You are God's permanent habitation. Praise the Lord. It is from you that the glory radiates to the whole world. Not from tabernacles and temples. God no longer dwells in them but in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is why the Bible said that, that the glory of the latter shall be what? It shall be greater than the glory of the former. Why? Because the glory of the former was dependent on the Ten Commandments. Don't forget the Ten Commandments said a glory. The glory of the former was based on the Ten Commandments. It's there. It says, the glory of this latter house. Touch yourself and say, this latter house. The glory of this latter house shall be what? Shall be greater than of the former, says the Lord of lords. And in this place will I give peace, say the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord. You are that very place where glory comes out from. Praise the Lord. That glory in the inside of you is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. That is why I've come to the believing that anyone that is not in consonance with the message of the grace does not have that glory. No! No! They don't have it. Because the Bible says that whenever the law is preached, there is a veil that covers them. Listen to me. Moses came from the mountains, but there was a glory on him. Are we together? The Bible says he even had to cover himself so that people don't see him. Others will literally take off. Because he was overwhelmed with the glory of God. They will run away. They will go. But the Bible gives us a certain account. Moses went to the mountain. Jesus went to the mountain and there he was transfigured. Oh God. He went there with James, John and who? And Peter. Praise the Lord. And there he was transfigured. Now, the glory that was upon Moses' life used to make men run away. But Jesus immediately, he comes down from the shining. The Bible says the multitudes were drawn unto him. They that wanted to be prayed for, they that wanted to be blessed, they that wanted whatever it was, when he came down in the shiningness of his glory, they came. That is the glory upon your life. That if Christ be lifted, then shall men be drawn. Praise the Lord. For you they will come. That is why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 62, 2. Isaiah 62, 2. It says, and the Gentiles shall see what? Thy righteousness and all kings, thy glory. All kings, all kings. Not only that shall they see it as they that are beholding from afar, but they will come. Why? Because Jesus dwells in the inside of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. These are those things that we read and we just get raptured in the spirit. Praise the Lord. My father said something that really caught me. He said, the rapture is not going to be that, that this one disappears, leaves this one in a taxi, then this one is walking. No. 
We are going to be so full of the word of God and just be no more. Enoch walked with God and he was no more. Not because you were, you were born again. No, just the fullness of the word of God. Praise the Lord. You shall just be there as you are coming. No wonder we are just getting deeper and deeper. Praise the Lord. I want to show you something in the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter 2.13. 1 Peter 2.13. Yes, it says, submit yourself to the very Ovid. No, 1.13, I think that's what I wanted to mean. It says, wherefore, guard up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, how can you, how can you even hear that scripture and you're looking at me like that? Praise the Lord. The Bible says, wherefore, guard up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus. Every time we are preaching the word of, of God, every time we are warning you, praise the Lord, there is the revelation of Jesus that bombards your spirit. When it does, you enter a certain grace. That is how we shall just go. As others are waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, what happened? What happened? Praise the Lord. You just go. Praise the Lord. Colossians 3, 4 said something that just caught my spirit. Let's go there. It says, when Christ who is our life shall appear. Hey. My God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Do you know what that means? That one does not mean of those days when Christ is going to come back. No. That time when you're sitting at the word of God, revelation is bombarding your spirit. Grace is increasing. Christ appears and you enter a certain glory that he has come with. Praise the Lord. That is why I'm very scared of you. Hey, 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 hey. I see that you are going higher and higher. I see that you're taking ranks in the spirit like never before. I see like the world is going to hear you. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 4. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Even where did that scripture come from? Second Corinthians 4. Verse 2. The Bible says, but we have done what? Hey, do I have you? Are you sure? But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Uh -huh, let's read together. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight. Oh God, there the Bible is telling you, how do you, how do you, how do you commend yourself to the consciences of every man? By manifestation of truth. The truth that dwells in the inside of you. Jesus Christ, the glory in the inside of you. The Bible says that is how you commend yourself to what? To every man's conscience. Verse 3. Verse 3. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? Yes, verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the last of this glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. Verse 5. For we preach not what? But Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' is sake. Yes? For God, oh Jesus, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go, you give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Praise the Lord. In the face of Jesus Christ. In your work, they know nothing but the glory of God. In your marriage, they know nothing but the glory of God. In the ministry, they know nothing but the glory of God. Everywhere you go, there is something tagged around you called the glory of God. You exude it and manifest it. Praise the Lord. You know those days, those people used to worship God. 
And the Bible gives us a certain scenario in the book of Chronicles. That one day they, were, they went to worship God. The priest was going inside. But the presence of God was too strong that they couldn't worship. But guys, that was from the outside to them. What is the experience of the child of God that carries God every day in the inside? What is the world supposed to be like because Fanero is here? How is it supposed to be? Praise the Lord. We no longer just want to do street preaching. Ah, uh ah. -uh. We no longer just want to do, yes, we are Sasula. We want to enter in those taxis and you're, you're seated there. My God, you exude glory, glory, glory everywhere. Before you open your mouth like this, they have felt it. They are like there's something in this place. The power of God is in this place. The glory of God is around me. Praise the Lord. That is how we are going to change the world. We are not going to change the world with much talking. Neither are we going to change the world with much words. Nothing. We are going to change the world by carrying the conscience that you are the glory of God. Let it out. Let the glory out. Touch your belly and say, let the glory out. It is in the inside of you. It was called the treasure in the earthen vessels. It is there. Every time when you hear a word of God, it starts to stir in the inside of you. Woo, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, that was the essence. You remember when the Bible told us that in those days, actually, even our father was teaching us some Sunday back, for those of you that were attending. He said, no, he even taught it here in one of the Faneros. That water used to come out of the ground. Is it Genesis 2? Water will come out of the ground. Praise the Lord. And he said, if you're here and you're aspiring to be a farmer, what? We are not going to be as they that are going to be waiting for rain to come to shower our crops. No. There is a water that is coming out of the earth. Praise the Lord. But what that was in the like manner with you. The Bible says that there is a wellspring in the inside of you that bubbles to the everlasting life. It is inside. Praise the Lord. While other men are waiting and calling it from over which sides and, and, and calling it from anywhere. You have it in the inside of you. The Bible says that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You are a well watered garden. All around you there is water. Praise the Lord. It says, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him and never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Praise the Lord. There is nothing around you that can die. Why? Because for you, you don't wait for the seasons of rain, for the seasons of men, for the seasons of, of I don't know business, for the seasons of what? No, everything comes from the inside. Why? Because in you there is Christ, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. And when we are talking about the hope of glory, we are not talking about these best things of this life. Praise the Lord. Look at the very end of excellence and perfection, and that is your portion. There where men stopped, that is not your portion. There where men thought, that is not your portion. What has entered the heads of men? What has entered their hearts? What has entered what, what they have seen with their eyes? What they have heard with their ears? That is not your portion. There is something in the inside of you. Praise the Lord. Touch your belly and say there is something in the inside of me. The glory of God rests in the inside of me. It is coming out in Jesus name. Oh Jesus. Praise the Lord. And that is what reminds me of a certain scripture in Zechariah 10. Oh my God. Zechariah 10. It says, start from verse 1. Zechariah 10 verse 1. Oh, I feel the presence of God in this place. The Bible says, Ask ye of the Lord, reign in the latter reign. Eh? Somebody say eh? Ask ye of the Lord, rain in the what? In the time of the latter rain. He did not say, ask me of the rain when it is time for planting. No. He said, ask me for the rain in the time of the what? So the Lord shall make bright clouds. Eh? 
and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Every one grass in the field. The ministry upon your life is for every one grass in the field. What is the field? The field represents the world. Grass represents men. He said it. He said, ask ye the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So shall make, so shall, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain. Latter rain is the rain that comes during the harvest. The former rain is the rain that comes when men are planting. The latter rain is the rain that comes in the harvest. And he says, so shall the Lord make bright clouds. You. You know they are clouds without water. The Bible talks about them in the book of Jude. That is not you. You are the bright clouds that carry the water. Bright clouds are those heavy pregnant clouds that are just about to shower the glory of God. Praise the Lord. It says, first go to that, to the Jude. He says, they, these are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without water, without fear. Clouds are there without water, carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. But you are not that cloud. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, you are bright clouds. When men and women are seeking revival, they are not seeking from without. It is you and it is within. Praise the Lord. He says, ask for the rain. People are asking for the rain right now. And we have many of you. All of you say, I possess Jesus. All of you say, I have the glory of God. That you are everywhere. You are the rains that are meant to shower down in the grasses of the world. Why? Because you carry the glory of the latter house, which is greater. The greater glory. The greater glory. He said, and the, great, and, 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 and the glory of the latter shall be greater. Greater. The greater glory is in you. Because of what? Because of Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus. Hallelujah. What is the purpose of this glory anyway? Let's go to the book of John 17. Hey, some people are bored because they, were, they, they wanted to, eh? There is, there is a, huh? Ah, eh. Those people shout things which I don't understand. You can switch off your radio for no reason. You just hear, and you're like, Echigunda <laughs> Chakamba. Like, what is happening? Yes. Yes. The Bible says, and the glory which thou hast no, let's go to, let's start from verse one. Verse one. It says, This word spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes, where? And said, Father. The hour is come. Glorify thy son, that the son may glorify thee. Uh -huh. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he shall give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Verse 3. And this is life eternal. Praise the Lord. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Hey. Verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. How did he glorify God? He finished the work that God gave him to do. That is the essence of glory. The glory is not just for you, for you to, 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 just, to just be there and I'm like, well, I'm born again. I have Jesus. Those days are coming to a close. The days when the church was thwarted down because everyone anyway was saying they are, they, they are Christians, they have God. And it was just a religious cliche and it didn't carry water. They have come to a close. Why? Because something is coming out of you that will redefine these times that we are living in. Something is coming out of you. Praise the Lord. I was listening to my father one day he was preaching and he said something very important. He said this. He said, revival can change cities. But awakenings, awakenings, they shake continents. 
Why? Because awakenings come after a certain place of reformation. And reformation only because of the revelation that you've got out of the word of God. That is why Fanero, we sit in the word. We feast in the word. The more we do, a certain grace continues to increase. The more we do, the church is taking over. The mandate of the glory of God is established on the earthly plane. Praise the Lord. He says, I have glorified thee on the earth. How? I have finished the work which thou gave me. You carry the glory called Jesus. But you to glorify God is to finish and finish well. It's for you to put your hands and do that that God called you to do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, hey, you've all gone quiet when I reached there. I don't know, Chichi. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want us to look at Hebrews 12, 21. Hebrews 12, 21. It says, And so terrible was the sight, right? It's talking about Moses. It says, And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and do what? And quake. Eh, he looked at those things and he was like, I fear and quake. Verse 22. He said, but you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, my God, to the general assembly and to the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, uh-huh. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Praise the Lord. That is your address. You have come. You have come. You remember what we read the other Sunday in Galatians 3:24? It says, We have arrived to our destination. You have come unto Mount Zion. Praise the Lord. You have come. You are there. The place where your glory must manifest is here and now. Praise the Lord. Let's get off this Christianity that is just superficial. This Christianity that is too corporate. This Christianity that is just there. That is the essence of the season four that we are entering. That everywhere you go, there is something about you that must manifest Jesus. If it be that you carry God in the inside of you, let men see. Let them know. That is why we are going to be on the streets preaching this gospel. But as we do, there is something that must come in the inside of you that when someone hears, they must attach to it. Praise the Lord. People are hungry. People are waiting. There is a certain person that sang a song. And he said that the nations were, were asking that who will go for us? It's something like, uh, hear the sound, sounds of the nation calling. Who will go for us? Who? But you're here. Say me. Who will go for us? Who will go to the corners of the earth? Do you have those lyrics? Yes. Who will shout to the corners of the earth? That what? That Christ is king. Who? You. Praise the Lord. You don't have to go there because you're standing on a pulpit. No. Everything in the inside of you was called to minister the glory of God. Everything about you. You can be the mother that you are, but minister a certain glory to your king. That when your king is raised up, they become a general because you are a great mother. You knew the glory that came now out of you. Haven't you thought of mothers that raised presidents? Which kind of mothers were those? Haven't you thought of mothers that raised generals that we've been reading about? John G. Lake, what, what, what? Which kind of mothers were those? He said, Apostle Grace. Praise the Lord. The essence of the glory of God is that it is to shed abroad to every place. Christ called us that his glory may be manifested to every place. He said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Verse 5. 
And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Was it verse 24? It says, it says, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. Oh, Jesus. I will that, it says, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Be with me where I am. Where is Jesus? He says, Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, yes, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundations of the earth. Guys, this is the essence as to why we look in the word. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians 3.8 that while we are beholding, 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 but we all with open face, beholding as in the glass of the, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as the, the spirit of the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are metamorphosed to another glory. When the word of God comes, you change into another glory. You don't change nature. No, the nature is the nature of God. You change to something else, to another glory. Praise the Lord. That is why this ministry, we insist on the word. Our mission, our vision reads that the Christian may become holistic and complete. In every matter, in diversities of manifestations of the spirit, in demonstrations. Why? Because we believe that the more we teach, the more we bring you people to this knowledge. Every day, every day we see the light of God. We are changed into something else. Guys, that is what shall usher the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing else. The gospel shall be preached and the end shall come. Not anything else. And it is for this reason that every day you as a child of God must make up your mind that you're going to invest on things that are eternal. On things that are eternal. The word of God. The mind of God. Your place of communion. Your place of fellowship with God. As you do, those things like Paul was telling Timothy are stacked up in the inside of you. As you do, as Paul was telling Timothy, your profiting will appear unto all. Why? Because you gave yourself wholly to these things. It is not enough just to come. No. When you go back home, go and check the word again. Praise the Lord. I noticed one thing. Every time my father is preaching on this pulpit, he's only but opening windows, opening those places. But what do you do once you get to the window? You must have your part. There must be that thing that you fetched for yourself and is building you every day. What I'm telling you right now is just opening you up to something. What? You know it in your heart. You feel it. Some of you write it down. Some of you speak in tongues. You follow that one up. And as you do, you keep increasing in the glory of God. You keep increasing in the glory of God. Let me tell you, some of you, you're not, you're not what you've made yourselves. You just made yourself something else. But that is not what God made you. That is not what God called you to be. You're saying, but ah, but now I'm, 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 I'm of age. There is nothing I can do. No, 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 no. There are people way older than you that God used and is still using. But the glory that is in the inside of you is for something. The Bible says in the book of Romans 8, Verses 23, that he called you, he called you, he called you, Romans 9 verses 23, that he called you, that you might show forth the riches of his glory. What are the riches of the glory of God? What are the riches of his glory as inheritance? What are they? What are those things? Somebody preached one day and said that when you look in the graves of, I don't know which graves are, but graves have the richest, graves are the richest because they have buried the richest potential. But that is not you. 
That can never be you. You will never step anywhere near a grave before people have seen the manifestation of the glory of God out of your life. Everything that is in the inside of you has to come to fruition. Praise the Lord. It has to come to manifestation. That is the essence of Fanero, making manifest. What are you making manifest? Praise the Lord. What are you making manifest? The Bible says we no longer have any excuse. You have no excuse. Because those things that were invisible are now visible to you. Why? Because for you, you always sit beholding Jesus. He said that they may come where I am and they may behold my glory. You're always beholding Jesus like this every day. You're always beholding Jesus. There is nothing that is hidden from your face. Nothing. There is nothing that is hidden from your gaze. Because where Jesus is seeing is where you're seeing. You see through the eyes of Jesus. You said he is the substance unto which you are formed. Meaning, your eyes are his very eyes. Is there a place that Jesus cannot see? No, maybe there is. If Jesus could think that there was someone in the depths of Hades that he was supposed to go down to the pits of hell to preach to them the gospel. What are those places we are meant to see because we carry the glory of God? Praise the Lord. If Jesus is looking and he saw you one day struggling in a bus somewhere and he said, ah, ah, this one is the prophetess of God. And he brought you forth. What is it we are supposed to see anyway? You see, they lied to us. They told us that all we are supposed to see is our needs. And they turned the church of God into beggars. People give me this. People which come to God and cry to God moment after moment. Even when you hear tongues, some tongues are just busy begging God for something. God, just do me something. Yet, Jesus is busy telling you, see what I'm seeing. See what I'm seeing. It is because Jesus is seeing something that he said, and this knowledge shall fill the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. But where is the knowledge of God? In you. Where is the glory of God? It is in the inside of you. That is Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2.14. It says, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the seas. These are the eyes of God. What is your part in the knowledge? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know we are maturing. We are coming from a certain place. Every day as this knowledge is bombarding your spirit, there is responsibility that is coming upon your life. That people are going to be sitting, in the, to be sitting around you, yet start to get a certain hunger. That is why the Bible says that you are the salt of the earth. Salt has various uses, but one of the uses of salt is that it creates a certain thirst. If you eat too much salt, you start to get a certain thirst in the heart. But how much salt is this for Uganda? How much salt is this? Praise the Lord. Let's come off from some things. Let's start to see where Jesus is seeing. In the place of his glory. That they may behold. That is what he said. The Bible says. Father I will that they also whom thou hast given me. Be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory. You are where Christ is. His prayer was answered. You are where he is. His prayer was answered. But what is your place of beholding? What is it? What is it? What are your agitations? What are your passions? What is it that you wake up in the morning and catches your spirit? What is it that makes you open your eyes and it is ringing in your head and you can't let it go? Praise the Lord. What is that? The glory in the inside of us, guys, is that we may finish 
the works. That we may finish the works. That is how we are going to glorify God. The glory in the inside of us is Jesus Christ. But when Jesus Christ was in the earthly plane, he kept walking. The man of God walked miles and miles. He couldn't sit because of what was in the inside of him. He couldn't sit down and be a normal guy. Because something was eating him up. And even when they got a hold of him and they go, oh God, I feel an anointing in this place. Oh God. Oh God. Even when they were holding Jesus and they were putting him on the cross, remember Jesus gave himself up. Jesus gave himself up. But even on the cross, he accepted it because the Bible says, because for the glory of that that was to come, he was beholding a certain glory. He was beholding you and me. He was now the one in the place of beholding. There was something Jesus was seeing. The Bible gives us a scenario of Matthew 13, 42. <laughs> Matthew 13, 42. 43. I want where it says that the kingdom of God is as a man. Yes, 44. It says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hideth. And for the joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he has, and buyeth that field. The field was a representation of the world. God looked down, and in the world that was struggling, through his eyes, through his eyes, in the world that was struggling, he saw a treasure. He saw a treasure. And he said, Jesus, because Jesus is all he had. Oh. He said, I'm going to give him up because I've seen another, tre I've seen a, a treasure. I've seen something in the inside of you. Whether you're beggarly, whether you're struggling, whether you're a prostitute, a murderer, wherever you are and whatever what is that was happening in the inside of you. He said, no, I don't care. Me, I have seen a treasure. Because God calleth those things which are not as though they are. He saw a treasure. He saw a treasure. And Jesus goes to the cross. He didn't care what man was going to do to him. The Bible says his face was mad beyond recognition. Jesus became naked. Oh, but what? They did everything. They spat on him. They scourged him. They did everything they could do to him. But because of what he carried in the inside, he didn't care. Jesus didn't care. Because Jesus knew one thing. That if I can just go through this. For the joy that was set before him, the joy being you and the joy being me, he endured. He endured. He said, I don't care. Meaning, even as Jesus was busy walking here on the earthly plane, you were in him. When he was raising the dead, you did all those things. You were picking up the dead because he was the one. He did all those things, but he did it because of you in the inside of him. And he knew that when everything has been said and done, and he's lifted, and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father, still he will look at you and look at me and see him. Jesus is everywhere. Because you're everywhere. That is why the church of God shall never die. There is nothing you can do. 
They said there are some nations where the gospel will never be preached. Let me tell you, there are men and women underground praying and fasting every day. And what are they doing? They are calling for men and women like you who are here in Kampala, who have the gospel everywhere, even in the streets. That you, when you reach those countries, that the power of God may be manifested and they might know that there's truly a God. Are those the things that wake you up in the morning? Are those the things that cause you to spend? Are those the things that cause you to spend? Are those the things that break your heart? Do you look at news and it is just a normal story that 50 died in Saudi Arabia? That a mother was killed for, 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 for refusing, I don't know what, with the husband. That her father, is that that news to you? That so-and-so was abducted and so-and-so was killed and so-and-so, or a border border hit so-and-so. Doesn't that ring a bell? Awaken up my glory. Awaken up your glory. Awaken it. Start to walk in it. Start to walk in the abilities that God so much invested in the inside of you. After all, Jesus says that the sufficiency is not of you. No, it won't be of you. The sufficiency is of God who has made you an able minister of this new covenant. Guys, sometimes the only reason we struggle, it's because we are not seeing where Jesus is seeing. Start to see right there. He said that they may come, they, they may behold my glory. Oh. Jesus, I feel you in this place. So they take Jesus. They hang the man of God on the cross. Day number one, day number two. Day number three, he resurrects in power. After defeating hell, after defeating the devil, after defeating death, after defeating everything that there was. What was he doing? He was doing because of what he was carrying inside. His glory. The glory of Jesus is the church. It's the church. He did everything because of what he was carrying inside. Then he met them. They were frightened. And he told them, go and wait on the upper room. And as you go there, you shall be endued with power. You shall no more be afraid. And you shall be witnesses. The reason why we are endued with power, the reason why we are full of the Holy Ghost is that we may be witnesses. Somebody stand up, let's pray in this place. I know some came and the reason why you came, you came because you want God to do something for you. You want God to heal you. You want God to pay this for you, to do this for you. But God is saying this night, see where I I'm seeing. See where I'm seeing. I'm seeing souls. I'm seeing purpose. I'm seeing mandate. I'm seeing nations. I'm seeing everything. I'm seeing the church in its power. Somebody help them. Somebody lift up your hands. Let's pray in this place. I feel an anointing. Oh, shata kabale kesunde keba shata baya. Raka pasende ke lepre shika tala braka rebos. Shala baka telepre kerebos. Somebody lift your hands and say, Jesus, hey, hey, hey. La kasete ke lepre kerebos. Whatever was put in the inside of you, hey, hey. Raka pasite ke lepre kerebos. Shata kabaye. Whatever is put in the inside of you, there was a glory that was prepared for. Shalabakale prekerebo 
Somebody lift your hands in heaven. I feel something coming to you right now. Oh, Kalapaka Shetekelebosa. I feel something coming to you right now. you have. But tonight is a night of the definition. You will leave this place and the blind shall see. The lame shall walk. You shall minister in revelation and in power and in the demonstrations of the spirit. It is not enough to have the glory. It is time to manifest the glory of God. It is time to manifest Jesus. Hey. Somebody pray in this place. Oh, la cabo si te que lembre so palica la zuke teba. Mashe te que lebre que de bayanta. The power of God is moving in this place. Ripa she te que lembre caba suke te le bayanta. Mashe capa so cataleba. My God, my God, Kala Gose Kepa Kashetelebosa. I don't hear you pray. I hear a voice of awakening. I hear the trumpet sounding. It is your time and your season. place praise some more if you're here and God has called you in a certain specific way receive the anointing of God right now there is something that is setting you apart there is a fire that is coming upon your life the glory will not just be glory by name the glory is going to be the glory by manifestation that the world may believe that they will believe that truly there is a God was buried in religion. That was not it anymore. Now we carry the knowledge in God. Somebody pray in this place. Shanda Kale Pazeta Baeya. Ooh, Shedabaya. Shanda Kale Prasota Kabayere. Mashita kalembre karaba sunga te kalabayande. Lipa sata kalembre kerebayanda. My God, because of what is in us. My God, for the joy that is set ahead of us. Lepra sote kelebre karaba shende kelebayaha. Lepra sika talabaha. We are daily walking in the prearranged paths that you ordained for us, O oh God. Making manifest the glory of God. 
in the face of Jesus. Somebody lift your hands in this place. I don't know how hungry you are and I don't know what is it you want in God. I don't know what it is your heart so much and so badly desires. Somebody lift your hands to heaven. I don't know what it is you want. I don't know what it is you want your heart to start burning for or your heart is burning for. Lift your hands so high. I see something coming. Oh, Shandaraba Satabaya. Just receive it. Shatabalandele Brekerebosa. La Sande Kele Preshita Kalaba Karabayanta. My God, I receive, I receive. Just receive it. Take a lembre shikatalaba kalabayanta. Repra sike shiteke lebre kerebos. That's readiness of spirit. Lepra shike telebre karabayanta. Just receive it right now. Receive it, receive it. My God, we are hungry. Just receive it. Listen to me. There are four men here, the Lord told me yesterday night, that the power to demonstrate the, this God, the power to demonstrate the Spirit of God is coming upon your life mightily. I could see them in my dream. I could see them in my vision. Four men, four men, four like this, four like this. One of them, you desired it and you asked of God. You said, God, I don't know this thing, but I just want it. One of them is there. Receive it, my brother. Four men, receive it right now. Receive it. Let me pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment in your presence. Lord, it's not just enough for us to know this. It is not just enough to know that you dwell in us. But Lord, the time has come and the time is now for the glory to be manifested. The nations are hungry. People are hungry in their hearts, oh God. Many are thirsty, oh God. We cry to you and we say, send us. And you send your word. We are ready, oh God. We are ready. Every prophet in this place, receive this. Every prophet in this place, receive this. Seven ladies, receive this. Seven women, receive this. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it wherever you are. Every prophetic woman, wherever you are, there is something falling upon your life right now. Just receive it. Seven, seven of them. Every teaching grace, every teaching grace, receive it. Receive it. Receive it. The glory of the teacher. Men want to know and you carry the teaching. Every teacher receive it. Receive it. Father God, we are dead to the world and we are alive to you. We thank you for what you have done in us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, the glory we are talking about might not relate to you, but it can relate to you starting now. I'm kindly saying that if you would like to receive Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, let me see by the hand of show of hands. Please come here. Come, just come now. Those who are busy moving out, please wait for a minute. Let's first finish this. Please usher them, help them come in front. If you'd like to receive Jesus, please come. The floor is open for you. If you'd like to receive Jesus, please come. The floor is open for you. If you 
you'd like to receive Jesus, please come. The floor is open for you. We are waiting. Please come. Please keep clapping. You keep clapping your hands as they come. Keep clapping as they come. We are waiting for you. Please keep coming. God called us to obtain glory. God called us to obtain glory through salvation. The glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please keep coming. Keep coming. We are waiting. If you see somebody coming, please help them. Fanero, please help them. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fanero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fanerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fanero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fanero. Finero, make manifest. Thank you.